Hello everybody, this is Marius Fully from GreenPro. And as always, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, a bit of a different video now. Um, and I want to talk about the uh, workaround for the Victron Error 8 problem. A couple of years ago, they defined this test that they do during startup. I don't know what they do nowadays, but in those days, if the system picked up Error 8, then it didn't. I think it tried three times, and then it didn't switch on. An absolute disastrous decision that Victron made, because I believe that in 99% of the cases, the problem is not actually in the reticulation of the house. The problem is in some device that some idiot plugged into the house long after the Victron system was commissioned, and then at the next startup, uh, because this test only happens during startup, uh, the Victron sees a problem and then it's chaos. And nobody knows what happened because some new thing or not the new old thing maybe was plugged into the house and now it suddenly has a problem and you're only noticing it two weeks later because that is the next time that the Victron system boots up. So Victron, I think you really screwed up here. Um, which is sad because that is not something that you normally do. So let's look at this problem in a bit more detail. Okay, where you come with power into a property, in terms of the most popular earthing system that we use in South Africa, your neutral is earth. In other words, you have a pin into the ground or you you connect it to some sort of metal in the ground and you earth um, the house's earth um, in, where you come into the property. Then you also link your neutral to the earth. And that is the only place in your property where you should connect neutral to earth. From there, if you have a Victron system, it goes to the inverter and it comes out of the inverter. Uh, to your loads, okay? Um, now the test that they do is to see if there is any leak current. Now the size of the leak current or the impedance or whatever Victron tests for is a huge secret and they won't tell anybody what it is. I've tried to find out, but I get ignored if I ask the question. But what they test for is that, is that there isn't a leak current between neutral and earth. And if there is, then they won't reboot. And then you get a call from the customer that says, my system keeps on tripping because that's how he experiences it. And he doesn't know how to look at the error codes. Um, yeah, and when you get there, it's error eight and it is uh, tripping because there's a leak current probably in some foreign device that's plugged into your house and it's not the house's problem. So I think at some stage Victron realized that they made a mess up of this and then they defined two uh, work modes. The one is that you can, if you consider that to be the neutral coming into the inverter, um, you can put a link between the neutral coming into the inverter and the neutral coming out of the inverter, going to your um, output once. Or you cannot have a link in there. Now, if you don't have an error 8 problem, in other words, a leak current between these two lines, then you simply leave the link out um, and you can ignore the whole problem. If you do have a problem and you're uh, inverter keeps on tripping and then retrying to boot up, um, then you can put a link in there. Now what the link does is it essentially extends that connection into these lines. And because it did that, it knows that it cannot do an error 8 or an earth leak um, protection, earth relay protection test. Um, so the test won't be done and then you don't have a problem. So there's essentially two work nodes. The one is there's no neutral link between the neutral coming in or the neutral going out. The second option is that there is a link 
you put in a link between the neutral coming into the inverter and the neutral going out of the inverter. And I've shown the link there. And if that link is in, then it doesn't do an error I test. But, and there's a big but associated with this, whether or not you put in no link or put in a link has to be associated with the correct setup in the inverter. In other words, you have to tell the Victron system whether or not you put in a link. Now, I've seen cases where um, clever installers came to a system that they didn't install, and then they find the link there, and they don't know about this option that Victron has, and then they rip the link out, and then error 8 starts, and just because of their stupidity, this becomes a problem on the system now forever until somebody understands it and does it correctly. Now, the way you do it is in VE Configure 3. Just for anybody watching, if you don't know what VE Configure 3 is, um, just take note of what we're trying to achieve here. But don't go and scratch around in, in that because there you can do damage to the inverter and you probably only also do not have the passwords that you need to change the grid code and if you don't know enough, don't get the passwords if you can get them somewhere. Um, normally you have to do a Victron course to get them. Um, so don't get the passcodes and don't scratch around here because this is where you can blow up your inverter. So if you don't know what you're doing, stay away. Right, the South African grid code is called NRS 097-2-1. Um, yeah, there might be a low later version than 2017, but okay, that's the, inver the version that's built into the inverter. Now, if you look at this standard, it determines things like frequency, uh, like over and under voltage, and you can see it's more or less 195, and 253 volt. So what it says is the uh, grid that's coming into the inverter has to be somewhere in that 195 and the uh, 253 voltage range. The problem is that ESCOM doesn't comply to NRS 097. There are many, many um, houses um, especially when you get to farms in rural where you're on a long line, uh, where the voltage at the end of the line gets too low, and then they increase the voltage with the transformer tappings, and then the first guy in the beginning of the line has a voltage which is far too high, um, and then it is outside of the parameters specified by NRS. The result of this is that many of the Victron installers has started using a cold, a cold code, a grid code called other. And what you can do there is you can set the voltages. If you set them the same as NRS, then you've got an NRS code in your inverter. But in many cases, you have to uh, set these high voltages higher. Um, I haven't seen a lot of problems on the low side, but I've seen quite a bit on the high side where uh, this um, is not high enough for ESCOM, who's not adhering to NRS 097. Uh, just one thing also about Victron, they, they don't really detect and report this nicely. It's uh, quite a complex process to figure out that your system has a problem where the parameter, where the voltage is outside of the parameters that is set there. Um, and that is a, a totally another very complex problem for another day. Okay, now if you don't have a link between your input and your output, then you can pick other um, and you can set the voltages here that you need to set here. If you put in a link, then you have to go to another option under other and that says the neutral path is externally joined, which means that you joined the neutral path between the input and the output of the inverter. And whatever you set here has to correspond 
to whether or not you actually have a linking. And it's just amazing how few people know that and what a disaster it is when those people start scratching around with a system. So as I said, my name is Maurice Fourie. Um, we are from GreenPro. We do solar and backup systems. And if you have a problem with error eight, uh, please talk to me or talk to somebody who does understand it because you might just get some idiot at your house who says he's a Victron installer and then he screws it up permanently um, because he doesn't understand it.